Let's take a look at the planned fastest highest flying spy plane ever, the SR-72. Dubbed the son of Blackbird, the SR-72 is seen as the spiritual successor to the SR-71 Blackbird and is a hypersonic unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV capable of flying thousands of miles an hour over immense distances and possibly carry weapons. Today, we will take a look at the capabilities of the SR-72, some of its potential operational scenarios along with the circumstances that led to its development and see why it just might already be flying. Today's video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. More than just a cereal, Magic Spoon brings you a guilt-free treat that tastes like you can remember and you can have at any time of day. A fifth generation cereal, Magic Spoon has it all. You want high protein? Up to 13 grams per complete serving. You want low carbs? Just 4 grams of net carbs per serving. And I don't know about you, but sugar is one of the things I need to cut back on. Magic Spoon cereals have 0 grams of sugar so you can avoid the danger zone and win the battle of the bulge. You want more? Magic Spoon is gluten-free, grain-free, and made with only natural flavors. No artificial colors or sweeteners. Great for you, your kids, or your significant other. You could say Magic Spoon has the right stuff. Magic Spoon is available in many flavors. My favorites are Stay Frosty and Cocoa. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Want to help support this channel and enjoy a delicious cereal? Grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use promo code TOG at checkout and get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash TOG. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now you know. Near the very end of the 20th century, the Strategic Reconnaissance or SR-71 Blackbird was retired. Nothing short of a technological and aviation marvel, the Blackbird had been designed in the darkest days of the Cold War with one critical mission in mind, gathering intelligence data unavailable by any other means. In a seemingly never-ending game of cat and mouse, each side spent enormous resources and time to ascertain what the other was doing, and while spies could provide some information, there was nothing quite like aerial photographs to spell out what was going on at the tactical and strategic levels especially deep inside enemy territory inside highly defended bases. In the 1950s, the first aircraft was designed from the ground up to be a spy plane, the iconic U-2 Dragon Lady. Conceived and built by the infamous Lockheed Skunk Works, the U-2 could fly at altitudes of 70,000 feet, higher than any interceptor could reach at the time. However, in 1960, a U-2 was brought down by a new weapon, the surface-to-air missile or SAM. Soviet SAMs quickly negated the U-2's height advantage. As a result, a new approach would have to be taken. Speed. If an aircraft could fly fast enough, then it could conceivably evade or minimize detection and possibly outdistance a missile fired at it. The SR-71 Blackbird was purpose-built to fly higher and faster than anything before it. Unarmed, the SR-71 went to war with a camera and sensors. The Blackbird flew at speeds in excess of Mach 3.2 and by all accounts was a success there was never a Blackbird lost to enemy fire. For its day, the SR-71 was proof that speed is life. The SR-71 continued to provide intelligence data after the Cold War ended, but its days were numbered. Spy satellites were becoming more numerous with higher resolution cameras and costing significantly less to operate. In 1998, the Blackbird was retired from USAF service, and in 1999, the last NASA Blackbird flew bringing an end to the era of the SR-71. Despite the assurances that spy satellites could perform the same mission as good or if not better than aircraft, many military experts felt that there was a gap in intelligence gathering that could not be filled by satellites and the conventional aircraft already in the inventory. This, coupled with the growth of anti-satellite weapons and anti-access or area denial tactics by near-peer adversaries, once again made the case for a high-flying, extremely fast aircraft able to penetrate highly defended airspace and gather intelligence data. Seeing an opportunity for a new spy plane, Lockheed Martin began developing what would become the SR-72 possibly as far back as 2007. The SR-72 was to fly at speeds of Mach 6 or 4,000 miles per hour, easily making it a hypersonic aircraft. The SR-72 is also intended to be unmanned, but not necessarily unarmed. More on that later. There are two major challenges in creating a hypersonic spy plane, engines and materials. When it comes to the SR-72's engines, there are three flight regimes that must be mastered. 
subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. Each of these categories has an engine that performs best in its respective performance envelope. For example, traditional military turbojet engines perform best from zero speed up to around Mach 2.2. Ramjets, meanwhile, perform poorly under speeds of Mach 0.5 and are most efficient at Mach 3, while having the potential to go up to Mach 6. And lastly, scramjets cover high supersonic to hypersonic speeds by making use of supersonic combustion. In the case of the SR-71, the Blackbird had used specially designed ramjets which restricted the airflow around the core and into the afterburner for speeds greater than Mach 2.5. For the SR-72, a turbine-based combined cycle or TBCC system will utilize a turbine at low speeds and a scramjet at high speeds, taking advantage of the optimal performance for each engine type. The two distinct engines will share a common inlet and nozzle but utilize separate airflow paths. Aerojet Rocketdyne is working on the TBCC engine design, with funding and cooperation being provided by NASA's Glenn Research Center, along with Lockheed Martin. The second challenge in creating a hypersonic spy plane is developing the materials needed to manage the incredible heat buildup from the planned high speeds. At speeds of Mach 6 Plus, the SR-72 skin and leading edges would reach temperatures that would melt conventional metallic airframes, so composites will need to be used. Some examples would include ceramic, high-performance carbon, and metal mixes. These types of materials can be found on intercontinental ballistic missiles and the space shuttle. The exact material composition of the SR-72 is not yet known and could even include material combinations not found anywhere else. Interestingly, the use of 3D printing is said to play a key role in the cooling system of the SR-72, making it possible to embed the cooling system directly into the engine design. These advanced 3D printing technologies were not available even just five years ago. As far as prototyping and flying the SR-72, an optionally piloted scale demonstrator was planned to have started construction in 2018. This demonstrator would be about the size of an F-22 Raptor and be powered by a single full-scale engine, which would provide several minutes of Mach 6 flight. The planned cost for this demonstrator was around $1 billion. Officially, Lockheed Martin has stated that the SR-72 would be in development in the early 2020s with entry into service by 2030. However, given the high security and secrecy surrounding this project, it is entirely possible that these timelines have been surpassed and the SR-72 is much further along in development, possibly already flying today. The main mission envisioned for the SR-72 would be Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance, or ISR. High speed and altitude would be the SR-72's main advantages. You almost can't overstate how fast the SR-72 is. The world's fastest rifle cartridge is the 220 Swift, and the aforementioned SR-71 is about one and a half times faster. That's incredible, but the SR-72 is twice as fast as the SR-71. Let that sink in for a minute. Being able to attain Mach 6 speeds means that the SR-72 could take off from an airbase in the continental US and overfly targets in Asia or Europe in 90 minutes. By the time local air defense has detected the SR-72, it would likely be out of range. Additionally, the SR-72 is intended to carry weapons. At the extreme altitudes and speeds it would be operating at, hypersonic weapons would be the only option, as conventional weapons would likely melt. The advantage here is that since the SR-72 would already be traveling at hypersonic speeds, the weapons it deploys could make use of scramjets, reducing their weight and possibly extending their range. There likely still needs to be much research done in a deployable hypersonic weapon at speed, but a variant of the X-51 Wave Rider could likely fill this role. Adding weapons to the SR-72 further enhances its value, as it can integrate a strike component into its mission while serving as a deterrent. Given these capabilities, most, if not all, adversaries would be unable to interdict the aircraft. In one scenario, the SR-72 could gather recon data, prioritize targets, and strike all in the same pass over a highly contested area deep inside enemy territory. Additionally, since it is an unmanned vehicle, the SR-72 does not have to spend valuable weight and space on crew, life support systems, and escape options, further enhancing its speed and endurance. In the unlikely event of a shootdown, the SR-72 could self-destruct without having mission planners worry about a captured crew member. This also provides a degree of plausible deniability if little to no wreckage is recovered by an adversary. Essentially, 
the SR-72 could perform recon and strike faster than the speed of war. Now you know. What do you think? Is the SR-72 a game changer? Does it give the US and its allies an advantage over near-peer adversaries? Is the son of Blackbird already flying? Let me know in the comments below.